I'm sure you have heard that Leica has announced the re-release of the M6, and it's pretty much an MP with a different top plate. Well, the M6 along with the MP has been my main camera since 2015, and during my most productive periods while using it over the past 7 years, I've put almost 90 rolls per month through it, so I've used it a lot. But that's it, till this day, the thought still comes into my head of selling it and jumping ship. And as much as I love this camera and all the meaningful pictures that it has given me over the years, part of me almost hates it a little bit as well. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to review the Leica M6 not from the perspective of being a Leica fanboy, which strangely enough, I don't see myself as, even though I currently own 3 Leica camera bodies and 5 Leica lenses. And I was also like a kid in the candy store when I went to the Leica museum in Wetzlar, Germany on my honeymoon a few years back. But instead of that, I wanted to share with you a bit about this camera from the perspective of a photographer who has actually used it as a tool over the last seven years. Just to introduce myself a bit so that I'm not just a random guy you know nothing about on YouTube, I'm Jeremy and I've been shooting for over 15 years now. And out of those 15 years, for 12 of them, photography has been my job. I started off with a Canon 400D when I was a teenager and worked in a photography studio learning all my basics on the job. And then I worked my way up to the 1DX. I experienced the entirety of the mirrorless revolution and I was there when Zach Arias talked about switching to Fuji and told us all how full frame didn't really matter. And when Eric Kim was raving about the Ricoh GR. And since I've started, I've pretty much shot every brand of camera. I've gone from Canon to Nikon to Fuji. I've shot the X100 line, the X Pro line. I sold everything, I used Sony for a while, I sold Sony, I jumped back to digital Leicas, I shot the M9, the M10, the MD, and all through that I've been shooting film alongside digital as well, everything from half frame cameras to medium format cameras to large format cameras. And after learning how to develop color film at home in around 2020, I made the switch fully to film. So today I mainly use the Leica as my hand camera, so the fast and nimble option to get those quick moments. And I shoot medium and large format cameras when I need more resolution. Solution. Having gone through all that gear and having experimented with all those different film formats, the one thing that has been constant throughout my photography journey was the Leica M6. And despite selling off whole systems of multiple camera bodies and lenses, I've always had a Leica rangefinder around. And the reason for that is because it just brings to the photographic experience something truly unique. Now I don't mean that it's special because it's such a desirable object or it's so well made and it feels so fancy and premium like high class Italian shoes. But what I mean is that it's functionally special in that it does something unique when it comes to picture making. What makes the M6 special as compared to other cameras out there is its design. I'm going to assume that you already know what distinguishes a rangefinder from other types of cameras. So I'm just going to focus on the two most core and to me the most valuable things about the M6 that has had a tangible practical impact on my picture making over the last few years. So not just the superficial things like the film advance feels really nice, which it does, but the essence of what really makes this camera camera special compared to every other camera out there, both film and digital. Firstly, it's its optical viewfinder. Because it's not coupled to a mirror, you don't get any blackout or interruption when you're shooting, and that allows you as the person behind the camera to more seamlessly interact and experience the world moving and unfolding in front of you. And you press the button when you want to freeze a portion of what you're seeing, like you're taking screenshots of real life. And especially when you're shooting film where every picture is actually costing you something. You make sure each shot counts and you really only take the pictures that you truly want. While that might seem like a small thing, you know, like is it really such a huge deal not to have any blackout while you're shooting, it actually does have a tangible impact on your final pictures, especially when it comes to a certain style of photography, where you're trying to time things and line up moving objects within your frame. And because the viewfinder is seen as a frame around the real world, it puts you, the photographer, in the position to create what I like to think of as more open-ended pictures, where the edges of the frame contain elements that imply that the story extends beyond the edges of the picture as compared to a more close-ended picture where everything is contained within the frame and the story begins and ends inside the frame lines. 
The second thing about the M6 that has had a huge impact on my picture making is that the lenses designed to be used on this system all have focusing distance scales, allowing you to preset the focus manually before you even raise the camera to your eye. And that preparation changes the entirety of your shooting experience, as compared to say focusing and recomposing. So instead of bringing the camera to your eye, slowly focusing and then slowly shooting, you pre-focus with it off your eye, raise it to your face and then shoot in immediately, and combined with the lack of viewfinder blackout, it allows you to be really, really quick, faster than any camera that relies on autofocus. And that matters, especially when it comes to making pictures of people who might change what they're doing if they're conscious that you're pointing a camera in their direction. And say for example, it also allows you to quickly make a picture in the fraction of a second when you cross paths with someone who is going in an opposite direction as you. And so pre-focusing gives you access to a certain kind of photograph that you simply can't make if your camera needs even a fraction of a second to grab focus. And so those are the two core things that has fundamentally altered my approach to photography that has been made possible by this specific camera. But so why then would I describe my relationship with the Leica M6 as being a love-hate one? Well, the reason for that is not something that I fully come to terms with, nor is it easy to articulate, but I'll try. You see, Leica as a brand has such an amazing heritage and history. German engineering, rugged build quality so high that it could be used by Robert Kappa in the harshest environments to make some of the most iconic wartime pictures of his generation. By Joel Meyerowitz, Gary Winogrand and Bruce Gilden as they pushed through the heat and the sweat of a busy New York street, ducking and weaving in and out of the chaos. And even the photographers who did make their pictures in such extreme environments, people like Lee Friedlander, William Eggleston, and Stephen Shore, as they made their way around suburban neighborhoods in America, making amazing pictures of their observations, just expressing themselves visually and exploring the medium of photography. And that's what Leica has been about to me, a tool that gave you exactly what you needed to make a picture, no more and no less. A tool that allows for exploration and expression of photography as a medium in its purity, that has allowed so many people who have come before us to express the things of their generation, to put into picture form things of their time and things of their heart. But somewhere along the way, Leica as a brand became a luxury good, a fashion accessory, something rich people wore to flaunt their wealth. Leica became the camera for people who seemed to not really care about photography and just wanted to own something. Branded. And when I see that, the thought still comes into my mind that maybe I should just ditch all my Leica gear, buy a bunch of Voigtlanders, and just be happy making pictures. But then I go home, open a photo book that I love, and I get reminded again of some sense of a truth. That just because someone who bought a Rolex was a douchebag, it doesn't mean that everyone who ever bought a Rolex is a douchebag. And I guess that's what makes this camera amazing too. That it can be anything to everyone. And deep down, in and of itself, I still love it just for what it simply is. A reliable, well-made invention that connects me with the medium of photography in an essential way that has the exact things that I need and I want that allows me to attempt to make the kinds of pictures that I see in my head. And if that's what I focus on, and if I'm able to keep reminding myself of that, you'll probably see me here on YouTube in another 7 years time still making pictures with the Leica M6. That's all for today's video. I hope you found it interesting. If you want to watch more film photography related videos, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.